on today's adventurous episode of the NES Pursuit. I think I would want to play with Mike Tyson in pretty much any game, like Legend of Zelda. The boys of three head to the place to be, a downtown district with nostalgic tones and classic gaming gold. The box ended up being like $12, but that's okay, Ricky's worth it. NES Complex bulks up his Nintendo collection while maintaining his flair for well-kept cartridges. Or is it like a black mine of black box games? I don't know, it's not gold. But it's awesome. Riff buys the most immaculate Sega Master System game he's ever laid his eyes on. I don't know if this cartridge has ever been put inside of a Sega Master System. It's perfect. Ricky and Riff battle it out to see who's truly more of a game's master. Oh, that was close, Ricky. Hold up. The boys roam around town and find themselves in a record store that also sells comics that this churro-loving man needs to get his hands on. It's not acting, but, you know, great papering. <laughs> Ricky heads out to show Riff some of his prize Mario figures. I don't know, it's just so ugly, I like it. Fluff your favorite spot on the couch and get ready for bilingual bartering fails, sensitive singing, and megaphone conversations. On this episode of the NES Pursuit, Ricky gets yelled at in a megaphone. This is the NES Pursuit. complex on speakerphone. So we're looking for NES complex. We're here at like the downtown district in, where are we? In Fullerton. And I don't know where Chris is yet. We just called him, he didn't answer. So hopefully he's here and didn't get in an accident. That'd be sad. We are in exciting, thrilling downtown Fullerton. I like cities. I like the fact that there's all these nooks and crannies and different kind of architecture. One of our favorite places to hang out, not even really just for video games. There's tattoo shops, there's record stores, there's cool restaurants, coffee shops and record stores, and there's all kinds of stuff here. And there's a place called Lost Levels that we are going to today. And who knows what we're gonna find? I don't, but I hope you find some games. That's one thing I do wanna find. Let's do it. I spilled something all over my clothing and had to change clothing. That's why I'm on time instead of early. <laughs> So we're here at Lost Levels. We haven't been here in a long time, so I'm actually excited to see what it looks like now. <sighs> Heard a lot of good things, so I can't wait to go in with these two dudes. I think I would want to play with Mike Tyson in pretty much any game, like Legend of Zelda. levels and things are a little different right now. Normally they have arcades everywhere but those arcades are down at the LA County Fair so they have a bunch of consoles hooked up to old retro TVs, CRT TVs. They're keeping the store alive which I like to see. So I wanted to come to Lost Levels because I know the owner. I know Steve, I've known him for years, about six or seven years. And one thing I always appreciate about his products is how clean they are. And so I wanted to come here and check out NES games. Now I am specifically looking for early Capcom games and for black box games. This, this is clearly a Pixel Game Squad rendition. Look, they all got the glasses and the goatees. So it was crazy when I walked in, there's a bin and it's basically just full of black box games. So I start going through them and I'm seeing Hogan's Alley. So this is a five screw version of Hogan's Alley and you can tell immediately just by the way that it feels it's got the Famicom converter inside. So it's a good thing to find. Soccer and tennis and baseball and gyromite. There were so many different ones and I'd snagged them all up and found the, the cleanest 
best copies I could find. I've been looking for black box games and like I literally came with the intention of finding black box games and right here in this little bin it's like a gold mine or is it like a black mine of black box games. I don't know, it's not gold, but it's awesome. And so, yeah, the collection is growing. Why aren't you guys more mature? Come, 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 come. Trying to turn into me? This store is gonna kill me when it comes to looking at games because I look over and they have a ton of Sega Master System games. But that's not what's getting me. What's getting me is these games are beautiful, they're pristine, they're like the Marilyn Monroe's of Sega Master System games, but I see a game. So they have a game called Aztec Adventure that came out in 1987. This game came out in 1987 and it's very reminiscent of a Legend of Zelda type game. You go side to side from a top down bird's eye view. The screen moves when you move. You got a little sword or stick looking thing. It's actually a game with really cool, clean, nice graphics. But when I see the price for $20, I don't know what it goes for. I don't know if 20 bucks is good, but I have to admit in this case from what I see, it looks really clean, kind of like perfect. This isn't really something I'm gonna argue or wanna barter with because I know I'm gonna get $20 of enjoyment out of this game. I wanna check out Aztec Adventure. Aztec Adventure. On the SMS. On the SMS. But I will have to say, when he actually pulled the game out and I got to open and look at it, okay, let's see. <laughs> okay, I predicted clean, but that is clean. I don't know if this cartridge has ever been put inside of a Sega Master System. It's perfect. Did anyone ever use this? The contacts and pins are literally immaculate. I can say the cartridge was in literal perfect condition. So for 20 bucks, listen, I don't even know what the price goes for this, but I know that I want $20 worth of this game. So first find for me today. Thank you, sir. Yeah, of course. I'm gonna do it. Hands down, locked in, Aztec Adventure. You're mine in my Sega Master System collection. <gasps> I tried to do that last part without breathing. <laughs> I'm gonna go on Aztec Adventure with you and you. I felt it. Oh, you know what I just felt? My rib. You broke his rib, Ricky? Oh, so yeah. Oh, yeah. Seriously? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you're not. I am an idiot. You're just like my mom. <laughs> and then I saw in a case there were some nicer games, some that they didn't want to just put out in a bin, and I saw Mega Man 4. So last week I got Mega Man 6, and I I saw this little this little beauty right here. You know, and last time I got Mega Man 6, so I'm looking for 4 and 5, and here's Mega Man 4, and it's beautiful. Once again, very nice, clean label. Looks good, I approve. It was $30, which I think is a decent, fair price for that game, so uh, I asked him to open up the case, and I got it in my collection, sucker. <laughs> I would kiss him with a little more, but you guys are all watching. We're adults that collect retro video games. Of course we're immature. So neither of us are good at Super C. So when you're in a place like this, and there's games of being played around, and there's sounds of video games, I'm like, listen, we need to play a game. Rick, Riff decides to make a bet with me, and I'm like, oh great, here we go. Let's do a little wager. Let's play Super C, but we're gonna play it real quick, and first person to die loses, which means you have to buy the person's soda at the next place we go to. First one to take a bullet and die, just to buy the other person their drink at wherever we go to dinner. Here's one thing about Riff. I'll give him this. He's really good at games. Like, like right off the bat, he's good. Like, we'll play a new game. He's better at it than me for some weird reason. I, I don't know what the heck it is. And yes, by drink, I mean soda. Ricky and I don't drink alcohol. Say what you want. First person to die, take a bullet. Let's do it. Dang it. In my head, I'm just like, I gotta buy him a soda. <laughs> So we start playing the game. The tension's building. We're getting pretty decently far through the first level. I can see Ricky starting to sweat. His hands are moving quicker. Oh, that was close, Ricky. 
My eyes are starting to zone in and hone in on the game. I feel the characters, Lance Bean, who I think I was playing as, going hard, working his hardest to save his country from evil aliens. Up next, we find out who is the true games master. Working his hardest to save his country from evil aliens. Oh, I'm gonna die! Yeah. And then I see Ricky die behind me. Because I already knew what it was gonna happen. I, I knew it. I knew it. Ricky died first. So I I, I get a soda on him. Yay! Anyway, good game, Ricky. Thanks for the soda later. I bought you a pizza last time. And a soda. I think it might be because I'm doubting myself all the time. <laughs> Maybe that's why I lost. But he won. He won. Believe in yourself, man. I need, I need you can do this. I should be your trainer, like in the corner, like Doc. I feel like one of those Mexicans. And his pursuit is love. I'm in there looking at Nintendo powers. I think I have most of them. I actually asked Chris if I had them because I got my collection from Chris. He's like, dude, you have every single one of these, but. I'll buy all of them here yeah. and trade them back for the ones with my name on. Sorry, Chris, you sold them fair and square. Riff's looking at stuff. I'm looking at stuff. Riff's actually buying stuff. I'm buying stuff. Yeah, I know what you're gonna put right now, Riff. I know what you're gonna put in the edit. Look at me, I'm buying something. But there's Ricky and he's just looking at magazines. He's looking at glass. He's not buying anything. I'm looking it through the glass, trying to find a game. Next thing I know, I hear a megaphone just blasting through my ear. It literally felt like it was right here. Ricky, are you going to buy anything? Ricky, you need to make a purchase. You know, I might come across as a little bit shy, but when I see a megaphone, look out. We don't come game hunting just to stare at glass cases. Please make a purchase. He's serious. I am serious. And I'm like, what the heck is that? Ricky, buy some things. Stop looking at the glass. I'm like, I've got to get it through to you somehow, man. You must buy something. The funny thing is, he always says that I'm the loud, ADD, hyper one causing a scene. Really? After that? On this episode of the NES Pursuit, Ricky gets yelled at in a megaphone. Maybe Riff isn't the loud one. But here's the thing, Riff is naturally loud. The boys go hunting and Ricky looks at glass. Where the heck did he get this megaphone from? Like, does he have it in his back pocket and I just never noticed? What the heck? I'm naturally not loud. I need a megaphone to compete with Riff's loudness. Oh, mamma mia, I'm a dummy. Second try. Everyone calls me annoying and you know what? I agree. I was once like you. He's hyper. I like Chris. He's a good guy. Bye, Richard. Thank you. See you guys. So we're almost done here. They're, the guys are checking out. I honestly didn't find anything. I'll take that Sega Master Suite and also one of those Transformers box for Ricky oh. since he's not buying anything. A mystery wow. box. So as we're checking out, I look over to the side and I see these little Transformers figures. Ricky, Ricky didn't buy anything here. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna get Ricky a gift. I buy him a little Transformers box. <gasps> Grimlock is not an option. It's not Grimlock. Oh, it's not Grimlock. Optimus? And he bought me a Transformer. What a guy. The box ended up being like $12, but that's okay. Ricky's worth it. We love Ricky. I guess I'm only worth $12? <laughs> so, you know, I've been watching the master work. I've been watching Ricky do his thing. That's a possibility at this store. Uh, with this, Are these no. prices, they're just fixed. Yeah. And Ricky has certain tactics. One thing he likes to do is he, he tries to ask in Spanish. Because what if I ask you, quiero comprar estos juegos? Uh, Does it work if I speak Spanish? No, senor. No, senor. I tried it, but I don't think that that Sean at the counter, I don't think he was falling for it. I don't think he knew what I was even saying. Right. Okay. So I figure if it works for Ricky, I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> then I'm like, well, you know, Ricky traded a burrito for a Mario statue the other day. Take it. Next time you come, 
You owe me items. You really, you can trade burritos for games and toys? I had no idea this was an option. So I'm like, I'm gonna just see if he wants any food. You're if I buy you a burrito, I'm like, dang it, is there any restaurant in this whole area that I could buy food and bring it to you and you would trade? <laughs> no, is there, is there a local restaurant here that like, there's something you really like? <laughs> there are, but I can't do anything about like that. No, I, I, my boss won't let me trade a burrito for black box Nintendo game. And eventually, <laughs> I'll be able to trade food for something. So you know what, I'm not gonna give up on these strategies. I think Ricky does have some sort of secret mojo. I'm gonna figure it out and I'm gonna do it. Yay! Like where I come from, you have to trade like a sandwich on Wonder Bread. The Transformers, more than meets the eye. This is like $12, so this better be something you like. <laughs> but we go outside and he starts unboxing it in Ricky fashion, which means taking like 15 minutes to open plastic. I didn't know how much it was when I grabbed it. I was just trying to do a Ricky favor. I was like, I'll spend three bucks on Ricky. Yeah, it's 12. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get Shockwave or, you know, Optimus. If it's a carrot, I'm gonna kill someone. It's definitely gonna be a carrot. It's another carrot. It's not fair. I just wanna go trade it in and be like, listen, it's not fair that I get two carrots in a row. Ricky, 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 it's, it's oh! half a body. But he gets it done and he opens it and it's, he got the cone heads. I don't know anything about Transformers. <laughs> that looks like threat. I know nothing about Transformers. He got, he got a cone head and there's all these little guys, little parts, you gotta put them all together. So we go outside and we, we open up the box, we build it, thrust is like a cool little, ooh. It has the tech specs. So you can find out how smart he is, or how stupid he is, or what his speed is. And Chris was saying things that I don't understand either. They started saying some Transformer stuff that I don't know. It's my life come down to this. I build toys for friends. And you know what? He kind of, you know, he's got that little pyramid thing going like a carrot. That's the one, that's the one, uh-huh. It's kind of like I got the carrot again. I mean, it's cool, but at the same time, it's like, it's almost like a slap in the face because it felt like I got the carrot. Did he say thank you? You know, I stopped buying those because of that carrot. I haven't bought another Cuphead mystery box since that. After this commercial break, the guys make way all through the town in search of vintage valuables. And later, Ricky shows off some of the absolute best Mario figures in his collection. about game collecting and retro collecting in general is how it takes you different places. There's supposedly like a record store around here, like a basement of some sort. And a bookstore and a that bookstore. might have games. Or records. I want to buy some records, but we get to wander around downtown Fullerton and kind of explore new things that we weren't even expecting on finding. You gotta push it home. Yeah, that's how you do it. You know there's this new thing in technology called GPS. And when we're here, we see a place called Half Off books and the sign says they also have records and comics and some other things so we go check the store out one of the first places I go to right away is the records and vinyl I've been kind of looking at vinyl lately getting into some of my past all right I want to see if they have any bread that's my goal Bread. Why are you laughing? I love bread. I wasn't laughing like you were laughing. I love bread. But right away as I'm browsing through, I see Ben Hur. Alright. Ben Hur is my dad's favorite movie of all time. <laughs> Ben-Hur is probably the most talked about movie in my childhood at my house because this is my dad's, not only one of his favorite, but by far his favorite movie of all time. So for a dollar to get the soundtrack for my dad, my dad's also into vinyl, um, I'm totally gonna pick up Ben-Hur for a buck. That's something that's cool about vinyl, man. Sometimes you find them for super cheap. So to find this vinyl in good condition, everything in there, everything intact, 
for only $1, this is a no-brainer, and this is going straight to my dad when I get home. Probably not the most demanded thing in this place, but memories, heart. That actually hurt my rib just now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that little giggle, wow. <laughs> Nothing beats DuckTales. Actually, even the new ones aren't bad. They're really not. I like the animation style too, which some people hate on the animation style, but. Then we go to the comic book section, and we walk up. I don't even remember who points it out, but we look, and there's like Disney comics, like old Disney comics. I was going back and forth on which ones I wanted. And I'm getting two of these because it's DuckTales. And you know what? DuckTales are awesome. Right there, there was some, not DuckTales, but Scrooge. It's like Uncle Scrooge comics. I was like, wait, am I seeing the right show? Because I keep getting confused with like Tailspin and all this stuff. I just love me some DuckTales. This is pretty much DuckTales. That's what it is. And I grew up with DuckTales. I love DuckTales. It is probably one of my top cartoons. It's great storyline, great, it's not acting, but you know, great papering. <laughs> All right, that's the only reason I'm getting these. It's actually for my kids, not for me. And I got it, they were at three bucks each. I couldn't say no, they're, they're, they're vintage. That's really cool display though. It is cool. Even if you're not gonna, that's beautiful. That, that, that's artistry, cartoon style at its finest. This was hand drawn. <laughs> but I picked them up, they were, it was too good. Great. Good job, Ricky. On our way out, I happened to see the comic area, and Chris, NES Complex, points out, hey, they got some Walking Dead stuff. And I, myself, not super interested. I love the show, but not super interested in collecting random things. But then I see a comic with Negan on the front. Giant, big Negan's head sitting there with a bloody knife. I think I'm gonna pick this up for Gabo, being obsessed with Negan. Actually, the first time I ever met Gabo, he was dressed as Negan, so. And Gabo, our friend Gabo, Ricky has a soft skin, Gabo. Actually, he has a soft skin. He loves his Negan. So I'm buying this for Gabo. Look at this. $2 for both of these? Come on, let's be real. It's too much for Ricky though. Too much. Cool, oh, thank you. Uh, cool. Appreciate it, man. Have a good one. Take it easy. This was made before recycling was invented. This is legit paper, non recycled. I didn't get anything, I didn't find any games. Nothing. I'm impatient. Wait, it worked. I guess if you push it, if you push it like 20 times, it works. So we're walking down the streets of downtown Fullerton. The sun's starting to set and you know, my stomach's growling. I can hear Riff's stomach from like five feet away. So we see this burger place called the Burger Parlor. And the sign says that it's like voted and, and won some sorts of awards. So we had to stop in and give it a try. And oh my God. That is a pristine burger. You know when you see pictures of burgers and you're like, it's not gonna look like that. This looks like the picture, but the test. That's good. My gosh. Juicy, tasty, well presented, and the wings were also fantastic. They were like crispy on the edges as well. Extra buffalo flavor. But it's tender. It's got that acidity. It's a delicious wing. This is good. And I'm satisfied. Wow. Oh, go fried. Stop on down at Burger Parlor in downtown Florida to fill your tummy needs. <laughs> My rib hurts. Hey, Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> Looking for them deals. Ricky! It's $10, and you know that $10 equals one burrito. Take a load off and Take a load Take a load off I think we might call it a night because everything's closing. But you know what? I know Riff and Rick. It's never over. The hunt is never over. If I get in my car and drive home, they're probably gonna stop somewhere. I bet they'll find something on offer up, and I'll just be left crying in the corner of my house.
That's not true. Don't joke about that. Unacceptable! <laughs> so we're leaving downtown Fullerton after an amazing day and I'm like, Ricky and Riff's like, hey, I really need to go to your house. I need something and I'm like, I have something on my mind and I know you have it. Can we please go to your house? I have something I wanna see if I can buy up you at your house. So, Ricky agrees, we head out through the night, the dark of the night, all the way down to Ricky's house in Compton. He doesn't live in Compton, I'm just kidding. It's, it's so bright and we're gonna get, Ricky and I, we were looking to go to Ricky's house and we got lost because we're kind of far away. And we're in the ghetto, I'm scared. Oh, at least it's waking me up. I have to be at work in what? Two hours? Hour and a half? I guess one of the things I'm most proud of here is this right here. I just like to throw random Mario figures, pretty much anything Nintendo. I honestly love the little Mario figures, so I, I show it to Riff. It's seriously one of my coolest things that I love. I just love figures. And you know, I throw in another little Sega and Pac-Man just to have a little love for everybody. But I think it's cool. I mean, look at that. Ricky has a really cool Mario figure collection. I'm really jealous of this because, like I said, I've been really into knickknacks and toys lately, so. This one's probably my favorite. I still need the tall one, but it's so ugly. I love that little shelf. Probably my favorite shelf that Ricky has in his whole room. And you know, he's missing his little, he's missing the hat and his overalls. You know what, it makes me happy just to look up there and it reminds me of my childhood. I'm like, Mario, but. I got him out of steel, so I had to have him. The big blue ugly one, that little, but he is my favorite. I got it for like five bucks on eBay. That was shipped. How crazy is that? That was a great deal, so I had to pick it up. Of all the things in your room, besides the Mario's, my whole goal to come here was to see, I know you've said it before, but if you have an album on vinyl, I am, I am looking for. I know which one he wants. So we go into Ricky's room and I'm like, Ricky, I know what I need. And before I even finish the sentence, Ricky's like, I know what you want. So I've been buying bread albums lately and he has the best of bread. He's been talking a lot about bread. I kept thinking he was hungry at first, but it was literally the band bread, which they're great. They're awesome, actually. Anything, we have two of the Led Zeppelin ones. You have the police. <gasps> Best of bread. There you go, my friend. Laugh if you want. Bread is a soft band, a very love-focused band, but in my opinion, some of the best harmonies out there. Make it with you. I'm gonna make it with you. Everything I own. Riff did get me this Transformers, and I feel bad that he got me that soon. I feel like I should give him something, too. How much you want this for? It's yours, my friend. What can I trade you? You got me that Transformers thing. So you know what, I, I have the greatest hits. I know I'll run into it, I always look for records, so, you know, I'm, I'm gonna give it to him. And thank you, Ricky, for giving it to me for free. What? This is just, there's, and his pursuit is love. Nobody cares about Riff, just use him to get game hunting. Use him to get game hunting. <laughs> <laughs> What I loved most about today is the adventuring, kind of going in an area that we don't normally go in. Overall, it was honestly a great day. We got to go to Lost Levels. But kind of just wandering around the streets makes a day fun and you feel like you don't know what you're doing next. Good food, good times game hunting, and then even getting some awesome music to top. What a wonderful day. And I would say it's time to go to bed, but I'm starting a midnight shift. 
thank you everybody that's a part of this, the gaming world and music world combined into one. A beautiful time. Thanks. Buckle up for safety. You can be Gabby J. Yay. What are we gonna be Gabby J? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jeez, man. <laughs> <You're Ricky>. <laughs> <laughs> are you? That is a bright light. <laughs> Holy moly. It's I can't film with you. If I do it, that light is legit so. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere, guys. I'm not going anywhere. Bye, Chris. <laughs> <laughs>